guys, my name is Catherine and I'm a craftaholic. Welcome to my craft room and my channel. Hello, welcome back everybody. I'm a little bit later uh, than usual this week, but that's because we have the giveaway. And normally I upload the videos on Thursday morning. But since today was the last day to enter the giveaway, I'm um, doing this a little bit later. So how was your week? I've been quite busy, but I don't have too much to show um, as far as uh, whips and UFOs and finished objects go. But I'm going to share them anyway. So let's get started. You might hear some noise on the background. That is my uh, JD purring on my lap. Okay, last week I showed you my um, tiny, tiny uh, granny squares. Well, I've been assembling them, putting them together. But I think they're a lot smaller than Kathy's example. And I'm going to have to make more than 10 because... they don't they don't really fit I'm gonna have to make it larger and make more of them so now I'm at eight and I just reached um, halfway so I'm gonna have to make 16 and make it a little bit larger but that'll be fine and then once that is done I can continue assembling the bag and it will be done so hopefully I have a finished object to show you next week. So next, painting. Um, I finished the autumn painting um, last time I showed it. And then I told you that I was going to do a um, study of colors on a metallic base. Now, I would like to um, give a small explanation. I won't go in it too much. But a small explanation about color and paint in general now colors we all see them differently and they all have a different effect on us there's cool colors and there's warm colors and what i find warm might be cold to someone else and vice versa but we do use the differences in cold and warm, in cool and warm tones in painting because they help us get depth and, and um, perspective in our paintings. So that is why it's very important to know about them and to use both of them, even if, for instance, you're a warm person and you say, I don't like cool colors, they don't go well with me. Well, you still need them for painting. Now what I did is um, uh, an exercise on also the transparency of the paint. Now every paint has a different pigment and the pigments used will determine whether your paint is a transparent paint or if it will cover a lot. And you will see this very clearly in, uh, in, in my, my study of colors. Especially with the um, one with the gold uh, on, on underneath, you will see that the blues I used are actually, well, actually turned green, uh, a teal. And that's logical because when you mix uh, uh, yellow with blue, well, you get green. Now here, the yellow, the, the yellow of the, the gold just... Uh, shines through the transparent paint and that will affect the color now this study it is really a study it's pretty but it, it really is a study and it's very interesting and I'll show you I only put one layer of um, blue paint each time so there we go I use exactly the same colors in the same uh, order on both 
paintings. Can you see the difference? Isn't that amazing how, like, this is ultramarine. It just, it's so transparent, it just looks like it is absorbed by the, the, the paint. Also, do you have the feeling that this one is pulled back and this one comes more forward? Well, that's because these two are the cool colors and these two are the warm colors. And that's the effect you, you get. Warm colors come close by while the, the dark colors look like they're farther away. Now, based on um, these very interesting uh, studies on how the meta metallic base affects the paint, I am going to make uh, another painting. This is a new one. The exercise is um, reflection. And what I will be painting is um, kind of a boudoir photograph in a grey scale. Uh, and it's the um, hip and leg of a, of, of a woman laying down and the reflection of that in, in, in the mirror. And I'm gonna do that on a silver background. Normally we, we use colors that will um, carry the colors you use best. Now this one will be... Uh, an experiment also it's the first time really that I'm gonna paint a human being and it's a bit scary but there's no face there's no hands there's no feet so I think I'm gonna manage and then jewelry Um, actually I only have what I promised I would do and that's finishing that necklace And here it is. Of course it's on a black base. It doesn't show that well. You remember that really really long string of, of beads that I crocheted? Well Here they are. It's a very thick necklace this time. Well, I'm actually trying to have the camera focus on it. Maybe it's because of the bling. Okay, let's try again to have this focus. really not helping maybe if I remove myself from the yeah well you know what it's not working I'm gonna take a picture of it and insert it so that you can see better so how I finished it is with these bead caps and I like when I use the very large bead caps I like to to put a smaller bead afterwards because otherwise it becomes very hard to open and close the clasp because it's very close to this thick um, uh, bead cap so this is the um, chain stitch crochet necklace it's very simple to do I don't think it really needs a tutorial now if you find that it needs a tutorial let me know in the comments I'll I'll make one but it's basically just stringing beads crocheting them with some um, chain stitches in between and then you grab the 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 you basically you you um, wind the long string around a piece of cardboard um, that has the right size and then you attach the clasps to it and that's it but like i say if you really need want a tutorial about it i'll make one but it's it's quite straightforward so that's um 
that's really my only fo i have not worked on any other jewelry like i said it's been a busy week i am working on a tutorial on the uh, tunisian crochet as well and i'm hoping that i can release that one next week so then what's in the box huh i had a very nice suggestion and i think it was adele it she says something about treasure box and treasure hunt and i like that maybe we should um I, i'm gonna play with that some more like um what treasures can we find in the box or banana box treasures or um yeah any suggestions are still welcome in in the description box below so uh, my plastic container again i have not added to it i have not uh taken anything out either huh. this is even still in the in the box it came in I ordered this, I even have the invoice, I ordered this from Beats East, um, this is Anne Benson's website, she has oh, such such pretty jewelry pieces, she sells bead kits, she does uh, workshops, um, she's also a published uh, author, oh, I'm sorry my nose is itching again, not again um and she has a fantastic tutorial she has fantastic tutorials on youtube as well now i ordered some beads in 2010 see i'm not lying when i'm saying that this is old stuff oh my goodness look at this Two thousand and ten. my goodness now I did not order a kit, but I ordered beads, and these are bugle beads, twisted, twisted bugle beads from the company Miyuki. The Japanese make really, really pretty. There you go. Um, seed beads and bugle beads with um, high high precision no no JD no sit on the computer with high precision with large holes and um, they're very regular I also have the magas which are um, kind of a drop bead and I oh, love this color And then I have some um, beads of my own, some Shurovsky pearls, and small Rivolis. These are uh, cabochons. Um, I think that's 12 millimeter. And I think I ordered these to make a Laura McCabe uh, pendant. But the problem with this box is that i remember ordering these specifically to go with these to make a bracelet and i think it was by ann benson but i don't remember what pattern it was i'm gonna have to go look for that pattern and It might be in a beat and button magazine. I have um, a lot of those. So I don't know how I'm going to find that pattern again. But I'm going to have to go look for it. And I hope I can show it next week. <laughs> okay. So this is um, yet another category. Hunt for the pattern kind of beats. Okay. I'll blindly grab another bag. 
Oh, it's not a bag. It's a box. Now, this I know are Toho, Toho Beat boxes. Toho Beat is another Japanese company that um, makes the, the um, cylinder beads and the seed beads. And this box is from a necklace I actually made. Ah, okay. It's just the leftover beads. Okay, so I just have to put them away. Not something I have to finish. Okay, let's grab another bag. Oh, this is also an almost finished necklace. Dropping the beads. Okay. I'm gonna have to try to untangle it, but actually it's better if I show you like this. Now this is what the... Oh, it's doing it by itself. Now these beads have been knotted onto a uh, beading wire. It's a nylon coated beading wire. And they're separated with knots. Not focusing again. Oh, can you see? Separated with knots, spaced out. And then when you grab them together, you have this springy, playful effect very airy and the beads i use in here are um, also japanese uh, freshwater i think they're called keshi pearls quite expensive i have some amazonite i have some aquamarine i have some uh, other pearls and glass beads oh and Swarovski. Shiny, shiny, shiny. Okay. And I still have quite a lot of beads to finish this one. Also the beading wire. One, two, and I think, yes, two. That makes sense. Because this is five. Okay. So that would be a seven strand necklace. Maybe I should try to finish that one for next week deal okay i promise this one will be finished for next week one more okay then this looks like bead weaving stitching oh yeah so i have the Size 11. Size 11 seed beads. Size 13 seed beads. And a piece I started. Any tips to make it focus better? I've heard it is because my face is in it too much, but goodness me, it doesn't work. Well, there you go. Yeah, it just does not want to focus. Okay. Oh, I'm gonna try it like this again because I really want to show it. Okay. Maybe if I go back and come closer. 
Nope. You know what? I'll take a picture of this as well and insert it right here. This is a herringbone. It's a two-strand herringbone and it's twisted. And this I am pretty sure the pattern was in a Beat and Button, ma Beat and Button magazine. Now if I can find the pattern I will finish it. If not, I'm gonna undo it because this is really just a start. And um, yeah, there's really not much else I can do with this itty bitty piece of, of beading. So if I find a pattern, I'll finish it. If not, I'll undo it. Okay, one more. One more. Oh, I actually have two. Oh my. Whew, this. Looks almost finished. It's not. This is the beginning of a lariat. I actually have a bracelet that is finished. Very pretty, if I do say so myself. There you go. I love it. Ha! Huh. I have to just figure out how I did it. I don't think it's that hard. But this is basically one part of a lariat and a lariat is a long necklace without a clasp that you just wrap around and make a knot and it just hangs so it's probably like meant to be like this so this is basically halfway I do not have the beads in the in the back but I still I know I know I, I still have them so I can finish this this is a lot of work already so this would be very silly not to finish it um also I don't really remember exactly if I was gonna make the two sides um, the same like make it symmetrical but you know I'm a little bit older and uh and 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 maybe I don't know being older doesn't have anything to do with it really but so many years later I just you know what I might I, I might just change the design a little bit maybe do something completely different on the other side with just a few of the leaves and um, maybe make some all oh, maybe make some flowers on the other side so a little bit of leaves and flowers Ooh. Yeah, I'm going to do that. <laughs> and flowers on the other side. See? Creating while I'm talking, I'm, I'm, I'm designing. So that's one, two, three, four, five bags. That'll do. Five bags. If we can grab out five bags per week. And I have one project that I have to finish. And a few that I can just put away. You know, I'll get through my boxes that way in a few years. <laughs> okay, oh, I'm being silly. So, let's do the giveaway. Oh, 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 dropping the earrings. Just a little reminder, there was the bookmark. And then there was the earrings, the Swarovski earrings. So I have my computer right here. I already filled in everything. And I just need to Oh, 
Okay, it's saying no comments found. Are you sure there are comments? Yes, I am sure. Let's start that over. Okay, let's try again. Okay. Ah, I think I have to click here. Yes, yes, yes. And the winner is... Coffee Loves Yarn by Carolina, Carolina. Sorry, Carolina. She says, Your beadwork is beautiful. I love how the Dreamcatcher turned out. Those earrings are beautiful. Congratulations on 100 subscribers, Carolina. So, congratulations, Carolina. Please send me an email. I, you can find my email address in the description box below. So, I find that very, very exciting. Um, the next will be probably 250, I guess, but we have a way to go. We're at 113 last time I checked. So, this is it for today. I thank you for watching. I thank you all for supporting me. If you like my videos, please give a thumbs up. And uh, if you're not a subscriber yet, feel free to do so. Hit the subscri subscription button and the bell make sure that when you want to get all the notifications you select the all not the customize because otherwise you won't get all the the um, notifications for new videos and if you really 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 like what i'm doing feel free to share to share this video on your social medias so thank you for watching and i see you next week bye I cut it out or leave it in as a blooper. Yes. Okay, let's try it again. I picked a different um, program now. Okay, complete. Loaded zero comments. Why is that? <laughs>